Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. <laughs> Those who are coming from the University of Johannesburg and especially the teachers who are coming from the teaching school. We have the possibility to visit today the teaching school and we have, we, I have to say that it has changed a lot. So, based on our previous visit, it was much smaller, but now you have a huge locations and big auditoriums and, and nice observation rooms and a really nice visit. So, uh, this is our second visit here, and we have enjoyed a lot. Nice discussions. Uh, our research project has made nice steps here, and, and, and we are looking forward to come again. And I would like to say also that we have been happy to host delegation from the Johannesburg University visiting Helsinki, and I really hope that this collaboration is continuing. Uh, before, before I start, maybe I should say something about our university and our strategic aims. Uh, we have universities, one of the leading universities in Europe and in the whole world, typically ranked among the 100 best universities. And during the last years, we have thinking very much what are important strategic countries and universities to our university. And then we, we recognize that our neighbor country, Sweden, is quite similar to us, and we think that Sweden must be among those strategic partners, and, and especially the Stockholm University, but also the other universities in Sweden. And then we, we are not looking anymore for US because we have quite good relations with the United States and many European countries. And then we recognize that China is a raising area. China is important, and that's why our university chose China as a strategic partner, especially the Vesey University. <coughs> and do you guess what is the third country? <laughs> it is South Africa. So our university decided that this Africa is very important, and especially South Africa, and what's happening here, what we can learn and what we can do together. So also in this situation, our university has selected South Africa as among those three most important strategic partners and looking for future. So it's very important and nice to be here. And now we go to our presentation. And we were discussing with Professor Henry some weeks before we come here what might be the interesting topic. And, and the discussion was in quite general level. Science education, something like that. And then we were discussing together with my colleagues but for how, how to build up the presentation that might be interesting and engaging for you. So we take that very traditional curriculum research framework coming from the team study, and, and we are now aiming to build up our presentation on this, based on this framework. So in the team framework, it is looking curriculum from the four different point of view. First is the kind of official curriculum, that is the, at the national level, what we are aiming in, in education, what we are aiming in science education in this topic. And then kind of uh, intended curriculum, it it's a little bit more, it's the official documents, but also the textbooks, and, and maybe we take also teachers into account here. So we will start looking at the official documents, what are the real the finished aims in science education. And then we look at teachers, how, how, what kind of teachers we are willing to have in order to organize science education in the classroom. And then implementation. So how, because we have, we have a lot of teachers here, we are willing to share our, our experiences on implementation of the science, education, science curriculum. Unfortunately, the time is limited and we are not able to go to the Ashid. And maybe the next talk is more focused into that. And we have just decided during our visit here that we will now focus more on student engagement and learning. So that will come later. And then I was thinking that maybe it's not so interesting just to 
present shortly for this our curriculum. I, I, I think that if I'm a little bit contrasting, comparing our approach to something else, that makes it more easily understandable. So I have tools, Highland from Asia, and this is because one of my PhD student was coming from Thailand and she graduated last December and we made a lot of comparative research in the field of science education. So I'm now contrasting in one Asian country and Finland and this might be giving you the view what we are thinking is important what we aim in science education. In my understanding the Thai science curriculum is very close to other Asian countries mm -hmm. so this is somehow reflecting what we are aiming and what are aimed in Asia. Okay, we know that curriculum and especially cooperative curriculum research is very challenging. This is because we are describing our aims in a different way. In Finland we are describing actually what, what the teacher should do. So we are looking at the teacher and teacher actions in our curriculum. Because that is, in our opinion, that is what is possible to say, what teachers should do. And then, of course, the teachers should take into account that, what is in documents, but also into account what kind of students he or she has in his classrooms, and, and other learning psychological research on learning, on engagement, and so on. The Thai curriculum is, is describing the learning outcomes, what the students should learn based on science education. So it's a very different way to approach what we are aiming at school. And of course the context, Finnish context, Thai context, they are very different. So we decided to take some kind of fair frame for this comparison in order to make this comparison. And we take the PISA framework. And this maybe give this presentation more interesting to you. How how close we are to PISA framework, how close Thailand is to that. You should remember that PISA framework is actually not a curriculum. It is not for, for what we should aim in science education. It, it is a framework for design test items. And, and the basic idea is that it's not so interesting maybe what is taught at school, but what kind of competencies people live in daily activities in ordinary daily and, and in working life. So we take this kind of neutral framework for the comparison. And the PISA framework, I am able to present the framework in one slide. And, and, and in the PISA framework, the knowledge as such is important. The knowledge in science, in physical and chemical areas and life science and technological areas. But also in addition to this knowledge, also the knowledge about science is important. In the PISA framework also the uh, affective domain is important. How, how interesting is science? What is the student's self-efficacy related to science? How much they trust themselves as, as learners? And in the PISA framework, you need knowledge, you need willingness in order to engage certain kind of activities and they are called competencies. In the PISA you need knowledge and willingness to recognize things, to plan investigations. You need knowledge and, and, and willingness to uh, make conclusions, evidence-based conclusions. And you need also knowledge while you are explaining what are happening around us. So actually there are very core ideas what students should learn in science, although this is not a curriculum for science. And then the PISA is also looking how able people, young 15 years old are able to use these competencies in different kind of settings, in personal, social, global, and so on. This is the framework. I'm not introducing tight context, but very shortly Finnish context. We are teaching science at grades 1 to 6 as nowadays as an integrated subject where 
physical, chemical, biological, geographical areas are interacting. And grade 7 to 9, we are teaching separately physics, chemistry, biology, and earth science, health education. The most important aims, just in a nutshell, the concepts are important. The concepts have always been important in Finnish education. Students should understand the meaning of concepts. Of course, the nature of technology is important, and the skills, the science process skills are important. Cooperation, that is emphasized in Finnish education. We are not having heavy testing, we are not having rankings, we are more focusing to collaboration, cooperation. Not competition, but cooperation. And then the engagement, the interest is important. In our curriculum, in our, our uh, how we allocate our lesson hours, one third in Finland is allocated for languages, mother language, foreign languages, one third for math, science, social science, and one third for physical activities, art education, music education. So in my opinion, we are looking human being from the several point of, not only from math side, science side, mother language side, but holistically, languages, science, math, and, and art, art are important. So my, my presentation is not accurate. I'm not going to the detail of the analysis. I'm just highlighting the outcomes of the analysis. And it's not necessary to know exactly the framework. So it was a very deduct deductive content analysis we were following. So this is the framework, but it is not needed in this presentation. And now, what's coming out? So we, we, we work very carefully. We, we, we were having two uh, independent persons who were going through the curricula in Finland and Thailand and analyzing that in the PISA framework. You see that in Finland, fin, it's on the, on the right side, uh, left, left hand side and Thailand on the right. In Finland, we are not focusing so much in physics and chemistry, but living systems. So this is maybe because we are willing to start from the students' own surrounding, what is around us, and things like that, and then add something in the field of physics and chemistry. Of course, I'm personally a little bit sad because my, my field is physics and chemistry, but I understand that in science, in primary level, this is primary level now, it's very important to start. And, and, and Thailand is aiming to balance as much physics, chemistry, biology. This is not related to category. In Finland, we have geography inside science. In Thailand, they have something else, the social science type of knowledge. And some, some areas were not, we were not able to classify inside science. In Thailand, they are more following the PISA ideology. In PISA, one, one, uh, more than one third of the items are measuring the student uh, understanding about the nature of science. So they are focusing more to that side than Finland. So now you are seeing a little bit that Thailand is very much following the PISA framework. We are not so much. And, and, and in this slide, at least, you can see that Thailand is very much focusing to the, all those three PISA competencies. We are not so much. <laughs> so it's quite astonishing. Our curriculum is quite far away from PISA, and Thailand is very close to PISA, but still our students get much higher than Thai students. So why? I have, to, I have to give you one more example. In our curriculum, even in the curriculum, it is an official document, we focus also the contextual topics. So the students should meet science in different situations. In Thailand, it is just those competencies. They are training separately the competencies, not, not so holistically the concept and competencies and context. So now I come to the some kind of conclusions. So what human being need when he meet a problem or, or is willing to learn something new? So we, we can think that the PISA competencies are that what are needed based on the PISA framework, but in my opinion, then those are not enough. Because in, in, in the learning psychology, research, it, it, it comes very clear 
that in, in order to recognize problems, you need knowledge on the field domain of the, of, the, of the problem. In order to solve the problem, you need also knowledge. So it's not so straightforward to say that visa competencies is somehow solving the educational problems, but we have to have, but we are more focusing to the concepts and meaning of concepts and meeting the concept in different situations. And there must be the balance. And another topic, in our curriculum, in our, we made also the comparative research on textbooks. In our textbooks, we have much rich con context. The students met science topics in different situations compared to Thai students. They are so much focusing to those main PISA topics. And then we know also, based on the research on student engagement, interest, that the contexts are important. Student doesn't develop attitude or they doesn't engage if they are meeting, if they are not meeting the concepts in different situations. And, and we know that, for example, health is what is emphasized a lot in our science curricula. Health topics. They are very, uh, it's a very neutral context for both boys and girls. So, <laughs> my conclusion, maybe you were not waiting that, that maybe it's not so clever to follow the PISA framework. It's it, something more is needed. We need some, some more so deep understanding about the learning and the meaning of the conceptual understanding and meaning of the concepts and the context are also important. Of course, there are several many other topics that has an influence to the PISA outcomes and, and so on and so on. But it was a very small example of what we are aiming. Now you know about that. So our second part, Anne is quite soon joining. Or are you willing to make any comments on that? No, not yet. No. Okay, you are commenting. Uh, so yeah, in the end. But <coughs> so the teachers. So this was the official, and now we come to implement it. Teachers are implementing how we educate teachers in order to have very positive implementation of the curriculum. So let's have first a look for Finnish schools. And then you maybe understand easily what, how and why we educate teachers like that. Uh, in our, our education, the equality, equity uh, is one of the most underlying values in education. Uh, there are also some other, other, there are the values, human rights and, and equality, democracy and things like that. But the equality as such is the most fundamental idea. So that's why we are having in our classrooms diverse learners. We are aiming to integrate all kinds of learners. Learners with learning difficulties, learners with behavioral difficulties in the same classroom. And this is one difference between our teaching school and your teaching school. We have much smaller classrooms because the very heterogeneous classrooms. There are all kinds of learners in the same classroom. We are having very small amount of students are going to the separate schools. They are all in the same school. And what are the four kind of perspectives to finish schools? I, I, I would like to introduce some kind of fundamental pillars in our, our schools. So the professional teachers, and what we mean with professional teachers? That professional teachers should have a solid knowledge base, and, and we now are understanding should have knowledge base in subject knowledge and, and pedagogical, pedagogical content knowledge. And the collaboration and communication skills is a second area. Knowledge area and communication, collaboration are, are there in the second. And, and in, the, in the third area, our professional teachers need is competence for lifelong learning. And that's why we are having heavy research orientation in our teacher education. This gives the competence for lifelong learning. Local curriculum and environments. We have a very decentralized system. We are having the framework curricula. I was introducing the science framework curricula. We are having broad aims for teaching, and then we think that at school level the teachers and municipalities are able to implement those broad aims to teaching and learning activities. First, in learning, and Ani will introduce the learning environments in science. We were so happy when we were become familiar with the teaching school. They were very nice environments, even more versatile. They were 
lot of space in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. Students were, students were able to be in the ordinary setting, in a different kind of group activity setting. So it was really nice learning environment. Use of ICTs in Arizona, I specialist in use of ICT. And teaching and assessment methods are crucial. Of course, teachers are the main actors in choosing the teaching and assessment methods because we are not having the testing at all in Finland. Leadership, the school leader. I was so happy to meet the leader of the school and vice principal, how, how clear vision they have. And this is also in Finnish schools, the goal orientation. I was going to the principal's office and there was a mission and vision of the school. Very clear aims. And that is important in Finnish schools, to have a goal orientation and share them what is the direction. And then the collaboration and maybe sharing the leadership and quality work at the school level. There are not different, I'm not telling you now about the quality, how we are looking for quality, but all the most important quality proce procedures are organized at the, at, the, at the school level. And then comes the networks. Grade level networks, teachers at the same grade level are networking, there are subject networks, there are the leader network, leader team, there is a student welfare group and the networks are going outside the school. Important for teachers to collaborate outside the school. And partnership with families especially. How to, how to look for the good of the kid to, together with families. The partnership models. So this is certainly what is the ideal school we are looking for. A lot of similarities with the teaching school. Leadership. I, I, I was recognizing very nice ideas in leadership. And now my my last slide. Okay, this is I actually somehow said, but but how we in Finland we understand teacher professionalism. So we, we are not using the term effective teacher in United States Kingdom. United Kingdom, they use the effective teacher, and they think that the teacher is effective if the learning outcomes of the kids are high. We don't use that. We will call them professional teachers. And then we need teachers who have a solid knowledge base, collaboration skills, competence for lifelong learning, ethical goal is important, teacher profession is very ethical, and so on. But, but in addition to that, the teacher professional actually doesn't exist without a supportive school side. My last figure was the supportive school side. And then also the policy. This all together are needed for teacher professionals. It doesn't exist as such, as an in, inside individual teacher. But the site and the policy should be supportive for that. And now my, my last slide. Our, and and I will continue with more implementation. So the primary teachers, how we educate them, in order to have teachers who have the knowledge base, collaboration skills, lifelong learning competence. The teacher students should select major, and it could be education or education of psychology. Multidisciplinary studies, I will explain what are they, and one minor they can select by free will. The students are accepted directly to master level programs. So in Finland, a teacher needs five year education, master level education. So it is technically divided. Blue is bachelor, yellow is master. But the whole package is needed. The communication and language studies are, are for or, or scientific writing, English, Swedish, Germany, and so on. And the study credits, they are European study credits, 60 credits is one year of studies. So this is the basic structure. And now I would like to emphasize a little bit. So inside, of the, what is the multidisciplinary <laughs> studies? So it is just pedagogical content knowledge of school subjects. How to teach Finnish language, how to teach math, how to learn math, how to support engagement in those subjects. We have research orientation. All student teachers are making bachelor and master thesis. And this gives, in our opinion, the good competence for lifelong learning. They are having a research orientation. And then the teaching practice in teaching, teacher training school. 
as we call it in Finland, it's a, you call it pizza. It's, it's, it's about 20 credits, two times seven weeks. And I think now Anni, Anni can a bit continue about the team, because the teaching practice is the place where our student teachers integrate different kind of knowledge, the subject knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and also the school practice. And, and we, are, we are not looking for kind of objective uh, idea of what is teaching and learning. It's a bit so we, we think that they should build up their own personal view to teaching and learning. Personal theory, personal uh, practical theory. Practical theory. theory. We call it theory. It's, it's a personal, it's, it's, it's subjective, but we are not making uh, models. We are supporting everybody to develop their own personality in our program. But Anni, it's your turn to continue. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.